Shall I tell you which qualities distinguish a work of art? First, it must be indescribable, and second, it must be unique. A work of art must seize you, wrap you up in itself and carry you away. It is the means by which the artist conveys his fervor. It is the current which he puts forth which sweeps you along in his passion. Renoir's late works may be more familiar to us, but his early works are more important from the artistic point of view. And this exhibition of the works that Renoir produced between 1864 and 1879 enables us to follow his development and maturation as an artist. I am really very proud that we have managed to show an artist as famous as Renoir in a slightly different light and free of the usual clichés, and that we can help viewers discover new facets of the artist and his work that have not yet become part of our shared consciousness. Renoir was interested in different milieus. The son of a craftsman soon became part of an urban bohemian milieu, and once he had become a successful artist, he was welcomed into the salons of the haute bourgeoisie. The most important and perhaps the most radiant painting in the first room is the woman with the seagull, which belongs to our own collection. Here, Lise is cast as an elegant Parisian, sporting an extravagant little hat made of seagull wings. She is shown quietly waiting, though for whom we do not know. Was the little posy of violets a gift from a lover? And why has she pushed it aside? The psychology of the scene is left open. Im letzten Saal ist es bestimmt die großformatige Reiterin im Bois de Boulogne. What captivates us most in the last room is almost certainly the large format writing in the Bois de Boulogne. We inevitably feel very small and unimportant looking at this elegant lady riding side saddle on a foaming steed. Her habit gleaming in the sunlight. The painting captures her and the young boy perched on a pony beside her in mid-trot. Clearly, Renoir by this time was familiar with the relatively new medium of photography. And this work perhaps ranks among the first movement studies, a response to photography's ever shorter exposure times. The painting also tells us a lot about that moment in the 1870s when Renoir and his fellow painters pioneered the style that would later be known as Impressionism. The animation, the light, the gleaming surfaces, the snapshot of everyday life are all clear pointers. Yet he's also building on a genre with a long tradition in art history. I'm talking here about the monumental equestrian portrait, familiar to us from Velázquez to name but one example, which also resonates in Renoir's painting. So the path that Renoir took was a broad and inclusive one, and not just a straight, linear progression from Impressionism to Modernism. How difficult it is to find the exact point at which one must cease to imitate nature in a painting. The painting must not smell like the painted model, but one must nevertheless feel the nature in it. My favorite bild is La Promenade from the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. My favorite painting is La Promenade from the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. This work shows a couple, a canotier or a rower, and the lady he has amorous designs on. Both are very well known types in Renoir's day. The first viewers of this work would have known instantly what the man wearing a boater was up to. After all, casual liaisons were possible even then, and the lakes and forests in the countryside around Paris made an ideal escape for urbanites in search of adventure. Renoir focuses on the moment when the young couple strays from the path to venture deeper into the forest. All is worked out so wonderfully impressionistic. Wunderbar, die impressionistische Malweise, dieses 
Lichtspiel hat er There is something slightly troubling about the play of light, however. But then the situation itself is troubling, for we see the young woman at that very moment when she has to make a decision. The young man is holding back the bushes so that she can accompany him into the underground. But her white dress, the color alone has symbolic overtones, has become ensnared in some twigs. So now she is looking back and looking at her dress and is clearly wondering what to do. Should she follow him? What about her dress? What about her? Contemporary viewers would have very well known the dangers in store for her. And these dangers were real dangers too, considering the position of women in society in those days. The play being played out here to an audience that could well imagine how it might end is about more than just morality. And Renoir captures this almost effortlessly by showing us the idol in all its fragility. This is something we can encounter throughout the exhibition. Paintings of scenes that are full of ambiguity. Why do people always look for ideas in painting? When I look at a masterpiece, I am satisfied simply to enjoy it.